<laughs> oh my god, I tore the bus apart. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to sink in. Like, and a few times I've walked in the door, immediately something's wrong. You're like, oh yeah, right, I did that. You know, it's just, there's been this pile of jackets in that corner for a year and a half that has just basically stayed there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit frightening still that, oh, I just tore it apart. I think it'll be okay. Alright, coffee's done. Ready to get back to work. Hello, and welcome to, um, well, Carlin's Worlds. Yeah, that should work. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, sometimes a nomad, a military veteran. I do things differently. There will be tinkering. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. I live off-grid, so there will be some solar, batteries, inverters, and maybe even some wind. It blows. And that's all I can fit into about 30 seconds. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Cool. On with the show already. Okay, yesterday I showed where two hoses come out right down here. Let's get a close up of that. So this is the two hoses that come out from the heater, heater core we just removed. There's that one and one above it. So it's, they got little chunks of flex hose and then they go rigid tubing, steel pipe probably. And then they go back to flex hoses. One goes all the way across. I think this was set up so they could have a second heater core and possibly for a Texas bus they didn't include it but that hose then goes down to the radiator on the other side this hose comes down to probably off of the water pump would make sense and there's a fly on me again there are a few hundred okay so what I'm looking at right now I need to disconnect those first so I can pull that through the firewall and that's gonna leak at least a little bit so I got a bucket down here Hopefully it'll catch most of it. I just don't want to contaminate this whole place if I can help it. I know the bus did leak and there wasn't nothing I could do about it. I caught as much as I could. But I just don't want to have, I mean, if, because um, coolant to animals apparently tastes good. Uh, the glycol or something in it. And, uh, you know, don't, you know, if your dog drinks, you know, gets close to your antifreeze, the dog will drink it and then die. I think it kills their, uh, kidneys or something like that. It's a horrible death, apparently. None of my dogs died that, that way. They just got hit by trucks. Because, you know, it just keeps going up. You know, the the rabbit drinks the cooler, Kool-Aid, Gatorade coolant and dies. And then the neighbor's dog eats the rabbit and it dies. You know, it's never good for anybody. I don't really like the neighbor's dog. I like the neighbor. I just don't like their dogs. Hear them yipping in the background. They've been yipping all morning. They must have had one rabbit cornered and they can't get to it, so let's just sit there and bark at it all day. Alright, moving on. It's not dogs, it's idiot dogs. I like dogs. I just don't like these ones. I also brought these out, uh, hose cutters. They are very handy, but I don't know that they'll work in this situation, but I'll keep them handy just in case, so. I'm going to undo the hose clamps first. Oops, wrong one. Try not to drop all my tools out here or I lose them. And once you get them loose. If you don't know any better, you're going to look at some of this stuff and really be mad at the guys that built it because they put the hose clamps in a hard to get to spot. Well, the thing is, when they built it, they did all the plumbing and then they put the bodywork on after. So it was completely logical where they put it at the time. And they just had no regard for the fact that the bodywork would then be in the way. Hey, first try.
new favorite thing I've been using this for a while but socket adapter for your impact tool all the old mechanics are used to air tools but since I didn't have air available in a lot of places I started using these and they were great you don't have the air hose in the way oh you gotta be kidding me <laughs> That makes sense. This is actually welded to the pipes. How about that? Okay. So it's kind of leaking on the inside still. So I'm trying to hurry up and get this part off. And it'll leak out here instead of in there. Not much of an improvement. But... making that cut in the hose. Hopefully it goes where the bucket is. That's got to be universal truth. There are a lot of those when you're working on stuff. No matter where you put the bucket, the leak will not go there. I used to laugh when I was a mechanic at the shop. Put your bucket there, yeah, you completely missed it. You get a leak that would go down, hit something, run across, hit the frame rail, and it wouldn't hit the ground until it got to the back of the truck from the front. And somebody would walk by and they'd be like, how come your differential is leaking coolant? I'm like, what? <laughs> you look back there and sure enough, you get completely, there was not one drop in the drip pan. That's just not fair. So I'm going to save that and then when I get uh, things put back together, I'll just put that right back in the radiator, so, or whatever. It'll be pretty clean. And this is why I stopped last night. I didn't want this to be started and then dripping all night. That's why I can do it in the daytime and have it finished. bad. This would be something if you're going to buy a conversion bus or a bus to convert and then drive it. Change all your hoses, change all your belts. Just do it all and be done. Because, you know, if you're buying a surplus bus, it's probably 20 years old. These hoses are not in great condition, so they will eventually fail. So just put that on your list of things that you're going to do before you take off on a long trip. You know, when you're Spending all your time redecorating the inside, don't don't neglect the mechanicals, because the mechanicals are what cause you to walk long distances. Towing a bus I think would be very expensive. I never had to do it, but I can't imagine it's cheap. And one little hose will bring you down. So do it yourself or have somebody do it for you, but learn how to do it so if it happens you can do it yourself. This is the kind of thing, you can go into any hardware store and buy 20 feet of that bulk hose and you'd be set, you could, you know, save some spare, so if you did have a leak, you could replace a section on the side of the road if you had to. Trying to get it to leak faster so it stops leaking it. Most of it's going in the bucket. Not all of it, but most of it. Alright, bottom one's cut and the top one's disconnected. See it. I can't see it on the viewfinder, but I think it'll show up in post. Alright, now we can pull them out from the inside, and we shouldn't have any more leaking on the inside. Okay, see if we can get this without blocking the shot too much. Earlier I did a lot of this off camera, and that's going to be pretty boring, so... 
sure if I'm going to be able to see this or not. Only leaked a little bit in here, so that's not too bad. I'm still wearing my wet gloves. Nothing worse than catching all your fluid and then knocking it over, so I'm going to put that back here. Let's get the top one first. That should just come right out now. Okay. Dribble it. Done. Bottom one. Oh, the bottom one's attached to this panel still. So. There we go. That went a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Cool, now I got two massive holes in there. Awesome. I'm going to carry these outside so they don't drip in here anymore. And then I'll clean up my mess a little bit because we shouldn't have any more shit. Shouldn't have any more leaks and it just pissed all over me. Awesome. All right, beer back. I just spent a couple seconds outside looking at what's left of the hoses. And what I'm thinking, I can disconnect one end and pull it across the top of the engine and hook it up to the hose on the other side and just hook them back together. So if I ever have to start this, it's not going to just pump water out everywhere. Treasures. So the bus is getting cheaper all the time. Nickel quarter quarter. Yeah, I'm making money here. Left and right. Another quarter. One of those things when I bought this bus I didn't have time to even clean it. A penny and a button. It's uh, I bought it, I drove it out here with stuff in it. I didn't have a broom with me, it would have been great the first time I brought it out here. I only brought it, brought it out here once, but when I first brought it out. Um, and then I immediately went into it and started pulling the seats out, but I had stuff in here already. So it was kind of a mess. And there are sections that have never been cleaned because there's always been a pile of stuff on top of it. That's kind of the way it is. Yeah, overall my leak was pretty small. That's not bad. I'm looking at the wiring bundles and I'm going to try to keep the ones that actually make the bus run together just so that you know I could go back and piece this together if I ever need to you know one thing I'm looking at if I ever decided I want to move the bus into a different spot I, I probably will never leave leave my property here but you know say if I just get bored of the view and I decide to park it somewhere else you know it would be nice if I could just, you know, check the oil, bring some gas out because it's mostly empty now, and uh, fire it up and move it somewhere else. So. Okay, so what we did, I don't know why I keep saying we, I'm the only one out here. This is the hose that went to the heater, and then this one comes back down to into the radiator okay so I just cut one end off and hooked them together used one of the fittings that was already there so now it's a loop tightened it up and I'm just gonna set it kind of out of the way that way it should stay out of the, the belts and everything um, I keep saying I'm probably never gonna drive this again but just in case I need to start it up that's one less thing to worry about next thing I'm gonna dump coolant back in so that's always good for a spill step out here I gotta remember that tire is completely flat so if I step on it I'm gonna probably crash and burn
think on these, because it's got the loops that go back and forth, you probably need to rock it a few times to get all the coolant out of it. That's not one I caused. That's been like that for a while, a bit. That might be why I don't have a lot of rats here anymore. Maybe they chewed through that and died. I'm okay with that. The rats can die. Well, there it is. <laughs> oh my god, I tore the bus apart. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to sink in. Like, and a few times I've walked in the door, immediately something's wrong. You're like, oh yeah, right, I did that. You know, it's just. There's been this pile of jackets in that corner for a year and a half that has just basically stayed there. And yeah, it's 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 a little bit frightening still that oh I just tore it apart, but I think it'll be okay. Alright, coffee's done. Ready to get back to work. Parts of this are very familiar. This is exactly the way it was when I was working on the mail trucks. I used to work on the little LLVs, postal delivery trucks. And we would change steering columns every now and then because they just would wear out. And it's kind of fun because this is very similar. I mean, GM apparently hasn't changed, well, the new trucks they did finally change, but the old ones, the steering column hasn't changed since the 60s. You know, the ignition switches and everything, it's very, very similar. I don't have that much experience, but some of the guys I worked with were always talking about that. There we go. Hit it to break it loose. Because we can pull this bolt out and then push the column down. And we're done. Now you can't steer anymore. I'm going to put the bolt back where I found it. Pulling the whole column out is, well, there's a lot of wires to worry about, but otherwise it's pretty easy. Okay, we're taking out, there's four bolts that go into the column, and then there's this bracket that connects to the console. 13 and 15 millimeter, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because we're in close proximity to lots of sharp and hard things. Oh, yeah, in case you were wondering. Yep, not a lot of steering left. <laughs> That's just fun. Alright. So 13 mil. Uh, let's see, I've disconnected the high low beam and the signal light switch already, which includes the horn. The signal light connector includes the horn. But since we don't have any power anyway, it isn't a big deal. But the one I couldn't reach is the ignition switch. And on these old style, your switch is up here, but it actually activates a switch that's way down here. It's got a little control linkage. In fact, your high low beam is the same way. So when you hit your high low beam, the little rod goes all the way down and switches way down here. Why they thought that was a good idea? I guess it just keeps you from having so many wires come all the way up here. So there's no wires on the switch. The switch is way down here. Yeah, go figure it. So, because I was having a hard time reaching the connector, I figured, well, let's just make it easy on ourselves. And I'll drop this down, then I can get to it easier. And I figured at that point I'd be excited, so I'm going to disconnect everything else so that when I get the switch off then I'll be ready to pull it out. And throw these on the floor I guess we'll put the other one. Um, and the wire bundle, there's kind of one wrapped around here but it's not actually part of the column at all. Um, okay, there's three bolts that hold, there's kind of a flange that the steering column goes through that goes through the firewall. And that comes off with it, so we're going to do those next. And they're way down there. I don't... I'll try to show you in a second. 
All right, so what we're doing, I'll get a shot of this real quick and then I'll get the camera out of the way. There's gonna be three bolts. That silver one, it's a nut I'm going this way and the two bolts on that side of that kind of uh, oblong looking thing that comes off the end of the cylinder, steering column. So we're taking those three out. All right. And if you had something from the 60s, 70s, 80s, a lot of this would be about the same. Like a GM truck, pickup, that kind of thing. Or your bus. I can't imagine there's a lot of people that are gonna be doing this exact thing, but if you ever wanted to change your steering column, this is how you do it. I always hated spending too much time with my head down in a hole. So we'll grab the impact driver and spin these out. No points for being difficult. One. Two. Alright, that was done. Alright, now we'll do 15 millimeter to pull these off. Notice I changed gloves also. Good enough. Since I'm not putting this back together, hopefully in my lifetime, I'm pretty much just dropping everything on the floor. All the hardware. I might put some of it back in place. Can't imagine why though. Now, somebody remind me that my ignition switch is still connected. So I don't grab it and try to run away. This is actually easier to work on than the trucks I worked on because it's bigger. It just gives you more room. So if I ever build a go-kart, now I've got a steering wheel for it. If you've ever watched, let's see, I was gonna say Roadkill. So Roadkill is one show on, on YouTube, highly recommended. And then there's another one, Dirt Every Day. Uh, I think they've done some crossover. I, I found one and then I found the other. I think they're both owned by the same parent company. One is Hot Rod Magazine is Roadkill and Dirt Every Day is Peterson's 4x4 or something like that. Anyway, Fred on Dirt Every Day our bracket. Oh, our bracket is attached. Anyway, so Fred on Dirt Every Day had this old motorhome in his property for something. And uh, I don't remember the story on why he had the motorhome, but it was just junk. I think he got it. He was going to take parts off it, and then he did, and then he didn't know what to do with the leftover kind of thing. So, he strips off the entire body and makes a go-kart out of a motorhome chassis. So that's still a possibility. Okay, the steering column is now free, except for one bolt. Okay, now it's free. So now I can get to my switch. Man, that is dirty. There's always one part of the connector you really can't reach. Try to get it off without breaking it, just in case I ever want to use it again. True story, last week, this last week, I got an email from my boss in Austin, where I was a mechanic. He got an opening coming up. That threw my whole world into turmoil. It really did. I was seriously like, man, I don't know. I was making a lot more money there. But I'd have to leave here. So in the end, I'm staying. Money's nice, but I like my space out here. So the part about hot wiring your car, I don't remember the exact details, but this is the switch you'd be trying to do it on. And the guys who, <clears throat> like on the movies, they reach up under the dash and yank out the wire. Yeah, good luck with that. 
if you're really good, you might be able to do it, but not like they show it. There we go. Cool. Let's see if I can show you something here. Since this is something most people will never see. Okay, so here's your switch, or your key. This is the switch, the green thing. All right. And behind all the crap here, get so we can see it. I know I'm not sure exactly where my key is for this right now, but this rod here goes down to here. So when you turn, hey, you can see it move? When you turn the key switch, that moves. And then this rod that goes down to the white one, also behind all the dust, that's your high and low switch. That's when you flip your highs and lows, that's what happens. See it moving there? That's, that's it. That's adjustable. If you have a problem with it, these screws, one of these is how you take off both switches, actually both of them. So you can loosen it up and adjust it. And that's something that we used to do on the trucks all the time. Um, especially if you replace that switch, you'd have to adjust it so that everything clicked at the right spot or else you'd you know, turn on the key and the truck would start by itself or, you know, bad things like that. But that is it. The steering column has been removed. I did a little bit off camera, but not very much. Now we got another hole in there. We got to fix. Tell you what, does that give you a lot more room now? That's great. <laughs> I am going to wake up tomorrow and throw up when I think about all the things I've taken off of here. It hasn't quite hit me yet. I'm hoping to finish before I do. There it is. These are the rods I was showing, and this is where they're mounted. And down here is where it connects to the steering shaft that goes down to the steering box. This, uh, I forget what this is called. It's part of the bearing, though. If your steering wheel is really sloppy, that's replaceable. That makes things a lot better. There's also bearings inside here you can get to. And parts of this shaft can collapse inside, and this whole thing can collapse into here. So in a case of a really hard crash, this whole thing would collapse away from you. Kind of cool. Uh, you can replace the switches up here. You can replace the key tumbler. Pull the steering wheel off, and you can get to that switch. You have to pull the steering wheel off to get to it. Done a bunch of those. You're really good at it after a while. On the mail trucks, because they are constantly driving and changing lanes and starting and stopping things like things you would never think of, right? Uh, your gear selector would also normally be on here if this was like on a pickup with your, you know, your gear selector. All of those little gates would wear out. It's one of those things that I'm glad I can say I was a mechanic and I don't think I ever want to do it again for, you know, actually working. Because you look at how dirty that is, right? And that stuff was with you all day long. And in Austin, it was very hot, and you were always sweating, and it was very humid, and all of that would just stick to you all day long. So no, I don't really miss it. <laughs> all right. Now, what else can we tear apart here? Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, that should work. Cool. I do things differently. Oh. And please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Thank you so much for watching.